him because he had been faithful to us. And despite all that is happening around us, his mercy is enduring forever. Can we just worship the Lord this morning? For the privilege to see another day. That's what Rizal says. Whenever I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. Can you just thank him this morning? For the opportunity of seeing another Sunday. For the privilege that he has given unto you. Appreciate him for the grace that he has showed you. Whenever I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you. This morning because you are awesome. We thank you because you are so good to us. Your mercy endures forever. Your grace from generation to generation despite COVID-19 your grace is sufficient for us. Lord be praised this morning in the name of Jesus. Be exalted this morning in the name of Jesus. We have come before you today and we ask Lord that that who has beckoned us to come you will attend to us. You will not send us away empty-handed, but rather you will meet with us. Thank you because we will take preeminent of today's program. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first aim for this glorious service is conquer us through the blood of Jesus.
Praise the Lord. The Bible reading for this service is taken from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 24, from verse 9 to 16, and verses 24 and 25. 2 Samuel, chapter 24, from verse 9 to 16, and verses 24 and 25. I read. Joab reported the number of fighting men to the king. In Israel, there were 800,000 able-bodied men who could undo a sword. And in Judah, 500,000. David was conscious stricken after he had counted the fighting men. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, O Lord, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. Before David got up the next morning, the word of the Lord had come to God, the prophet, David seer. Go and tell David, this is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. So God went to David and said to him, Shall there come upon you three years of famine in your land? Or three months of fleeing from your enemies? Why they pursue you? Or three days of plague in your land? Now then... Think it over and decide how I should answer the one who sent me. David said to God, I am in deep distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel from that morning until the end of the time designated. And 70,000 of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. When angel stretched out his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord was grieved because of calamity and said to the angel who was afflicting the people, Enough! Withdraw your hand. The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of, of Aruna, the Jebusite. I read 24 and 25 now. But the king replied to Haruna, No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord, God, to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and oxen and pay 50 shekels of silver for them. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offering and fellowship offering. Then the Lord answered prayer in behalf of the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. But the Lord blessed the reading of his word. Hello, children. Hello, children. Children of the Bible. Yes, we are blessed children. I know you would have missed Sunday school. It's, it's such a long, long time. And I know some of you are asking, especially the younger children, what is this lockdown? Why are they locking us down? Why is there no school? Why can't we just go to school like we usually do? Do you know something? There was something like a lockdown in the Bible as well. The Bible records the story of Noah and his children. And the Bible recorded that Noah was in an ark, which can be likened to the lockdown of today. So if the children were going to school at that time, they couldn't go. They couldn't do anything. They were all in an ark. Because God wanted to protect them. 
Let me show you this video clip and then we'll talk a little bit afterwards. When God created the world and everything in it, He made man in His own image to live here and take care of the world. However, humans started doing evil things and stopped following His commands. They did not pray to Him and they only cared for their own comfort. God decided to destroy the earth and everybody in it. There was only one man who loved God, Noah. Noah loved and worshipped God. He believed in God even though nobody else did. He also taught his family to love and fear God. One day, God spoke to Noah. Noah, you are a good man. You are righteous and you live a good life with your family. But the world has become evil and all the people in the world deserve to die. Noah was shocked at what he heard but he remained calm. But God, these are your people. Have mercy on them. No, Noah. The world has to be destroyed. I will send a great flood that will destroy the whole of Earth. It will rain without end for 40 days. Every living being on Earth will be destroyed. So be it. Let your will be done. Fear not, Noah. I have come to warn you because you have been a good man. You and your family will survive the flood. You are merciful, my God. You will have to build an ark for you and your family. What is an ark, my Lord? An ark is a big wooden boat. You will build this ark to protect your family from the flood. The ark should be big enough for your family. You will also be taking many animals along with you, so that they can survive too. But God, I have no knowledge about building arcs. How will I do this? Do not worry. I will give you all the instructions you need. Just follow them, and you will be able to build it without any problem. Okay, my lord. I will follow your instructions and do as you say. You must also talk to the people around you and try to convince them to mend their ways. Tell them to turn to me, pray to me, and fear me. Tell them to be kind and do good things. Tell them to stop being selfish and live a good life. I will do as you say, my lord. And as God instructed, Noah started to cut down trees. He made big planks out of the wood to build his ark. People started noticing what Noah was doing. They gathered around him as he shaped his planks and piled them up. They were curious. Noah, what are you doing? Hello, friend. I am building an ark. What is an ark? It is a big boat, my friend. It will protect me and my family from the flood. What flood? My dear friend, God, our Creator, spoke to me. He said that He is angry with the people and He is going to destroy all living beings with a flood. My dear Noah, we don't understand. Where is this flood coming from? God will send heavy rains. It will rain non-stop for 40 days and a flood will come and wipe out everything. You can stop this. God is angry with your ways. You only have to turn to Him and mend your ways. Pray to Him. Ask Him for forgiveness and you will be saved. You can come with me on my ark. You will be saved from the flood. Noah, have you gone mad? You do not make any sense. Why are you doing all this? Stop building this nonsense ark and look after your family. Sorry, my friend, this is my work. God has asked me to do this. I have to obey Him. I will build this ark as He has told me. The villagers laughed loudly and returned to their homes. By now, Noah had gathered all the food grains, the seeds, and the animals. He stored the food grains in the ark. God then made the animals arrive in pairs. 
Every animal and bird on the earth waited in line patiently to enter the ark. There were lions, tigers, elephants, snakes, parrots, zebras, everyone. Two by two, they entered the ark. Then Noah called to the villagers and once again invited them to enter his ark. The people still refused to believe in him. They could not understand why he was collecting animals and placing them in the ark. They continued to sin against God and they refused to enter. You said it would rain for 40 days, Noah. I don't even see a drip of rain anywhere. Do you still think that you're making any sense? Do you really think that this God is going to save you? You have been making a fool of yourself and trying to make us all fools as well. I believe in my Lord. He will never abandon me. He has always guided me to do what is right. I am still inviting you to join me in the ark. You will be saved. We are not coming into your stupid ark. You can do as you please. Just leave us alone now. Once Noah had completed filling up his ark with the animals, God told Noah to assemble his family and bring them into the ark. Once they had entered the ark, the door was closed and the ark was sealed shut. As soon as the ark was sealed, the first drops of rain began to fall on earth. The villagers were amazed as there had not been any rains for a very long time. Soon it was raining heavily and big thunderclouds gathered all around the village. It continued to rain for days and soon the water was flooding the village. The ark then began to float over the water. People in the village were running for shelter as their homes had been swept away by the flood. Meanwhile, Noah, his family, and the animals he had brought with him were safe and warm in the ark. It rained heavily for 40 days, and in the end there was nothing but water all around. All living beings were drowned, and even the highest mountains were covered by the flood. Noah looked out of the window of his ark and could see nothing but water all around. After 40 days and 40 nights of rain, it stopped raining. The water level slowly started coming down. The ark continued to sail with Noah's family and the animals. They kept sailing in search of dry land. After many days, Noah sent a dove out in search of dry land. The dove returned as it could not find any place to make a nest. The water still covered every patch of dry land. Noah waited for one week and then sent the dove out again. This time, the dove returned with an olive branch. This meant that the water levels had come down. Noah waited for one more week, and this time, when he sent the dove out, it did not return. This was a sign that the water had come down and there was dry land. Soon, the ark came to a stop on top of a dry mountain. Then God spoke to Noah. Noah, it is now safe for you and your family to leave the ark. You can step out to the land. You can now lead a new life with your family. Release all the animals. Let them once again roam the earth. Thank you, my Lord. I am thankful for your love and faith in me. You have kept me safe through all this. My family is alive and well because of you. We owe our lives to you. You are a righteous man, Noah. Your faith in me has saved you. Your family has been saved because of your good deeds. I promise that I will never again send the floods. Okay. So, you have seen the video clip. Did you enjoy it? I'm sure you did. The Bible says Noah was a righteous man. He was a man loved by God. Just like each and every one of you. God loves you. And he will protect you and see you through this lockdown. God will not allow any plague come to, near to any of you. The Lord will see you through. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 91, he says, 
He says, I will cover you with my feathers. And under my wings you will take refuge. Can you imagine being under the, being covered by the feathers of God and taking refuge under his wings? No evil can befall you there. So the Lord will protect us through COVID-19. The Lord will take care of us as he took care of Noah and his family. And we trust that all of us will come out of this stronger. Do you know it came to pass that Noah and his family were released from that ark? The Bible says in Genesis. In fact, you can read the story of, Genesis, uh, the story of Noah in Genesis chapter 6, 7, and 8. But chapters 8, verse 13 says, And God remembered Noah, and it came to pass that the, the, the waters passed away, the boat or the ark came onto land onto a mountain Ararat, and Noah and his family got out. In chapter 8, you will see that. So this is definitely going to come to pass. But have you ever asked yourself, what was Noah doing in that ark? What were they doing? They spent almost 150 days in that ark. The Bible says that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. So they spent a long time there. But the Bible recorded that Noah was a righteous man. He loved God. He spoke with God. How can we speak with God during this lockdown? Children, it is time to seek the Lord. During this lockdown, do you know you have a special opportunity to read the word of God, to study his word, to pray, to go closer to God? The Bible says in James chapter, 14, uh, chapter 4 verse 8, it says, come near to me and I will draw near to you. It is time to seek the Lord. Children, I want us to start by taking a book of the Bible. We will start with Matthew. Matthew chapters 1 and 2. No matter how young you are, I'm sure daddy and mommy can take you through it. If you are older, you can read it. And you can spend this time seeking the Lord. The Bible says we must earnestly seek the Lord. Hebrews 11, 6. Earnestly seek the Lord. So, let us do that during this lockdown. Take time to study the word of God. Take time to pray. Take time to know God more. And we are going to have another Zoom meeting where we will all come together and we will study the word of God and we will ask you what you have read. That's going to take place on Thursday between 6 and 7. Daddy and mommy will explain that to you. But we are going to take time to seek the Lord. I hope this goes down well with all of you. Yes, I know you've been trying as much as possible to read the Bible. You know, we've done a lot of reading the Bible, but there hasn't been enough time for us to study that word. Now we have all the time. God wants us to draw closer to him. God wants us to, to, to seek him more diligently, persistently, and to persevere in seeking him. The Lord will help us as we continue to stay in the lockdown. He will take care of us. He will be with us. He will cover us with his feathers. And under his wings, we will take refuge. Praise the Lord. Children, before I leave you today, we're going to take our memory verse. Our memory verses are an important part of our Bible study. And our memory verse today is taken from the book of Psalm 145, verse 18, which says, The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. That is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 145, verse 18. Daddy and mommy, please help us ensure that our children memorize this verse. We also want our children to read the Bible. Please don't forget to take them through Matthew chapters 1 and 2. God bless you.
praise the Lord. Our special aim for this glorious service is Christ is our cornerstone. fellow servants of the Most High God. Today is Sunday and we have gathered in our homes to hear the word of God. As you know what is happening, it is not possible for us to meet in the sanctuary of the Most High God. But God has made it possible that as many homes as are represented in Christ's chapel, the word of God is coming, projected from the altar of the Most High God. So I proclaim blessings unto your homes, unto your families, unto your people, unto your beloved ones this morning. Amen. And I pray it is well and it shall be well with all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank our daddy, the senior pastor, for this privilege he has given that we should stand here also and bring the word today. And I pray, Father, God Almighty, that you will use me as an oracle to bring blessings and succor and knowledge unto your people wherever they may be. And I pray that the Lord will grant us fertile heart to receive his word this morning. Amen. The title of our sermon is It Came to Pass. It Came to Pass. This is a very remarkable statement of facts, a statement of truth, a statement of certainty, and a statement of proven reality. It came to pass. In the Bible, the King James Version, you can see it came to pass. It came to pass 452 times in different places of the Bible. And these are incidents that befell real human beings, experiences they had, what they passed through, what they suffered. And these experiences, 
this hardship did not last. They all came to pass. Praise the Lord. Now, we can see the situation we find ourselves in now. It is like a situation of warfare. When there is war, do we go to work? Do children go to school? Do mommy and daddy, do they go to work? Do we have freedom when there is war? You are locked inside. When there is war, because you are not going to work, and the food in the house, you have finished it, there will be hunger. But you dare not go out. That's a warfare situation. Businesses are closed. And people run for cover. You don't have freedom. They ask you whether you like it or not. You stay indoor. That's a war situation. In a war situation, you pray and you leave that you will see another day. Students cannot go to school. And in a war situation, you see bodies littering the whole situation, the whole place. May we not see evil in our days in Jesus' name. The war situation we face now, we are not facing war with the Air Force or with the Navy or with the infantry on land. We are facing a war we have never seen before here on this earth. And when it has come to pass, it won't come again. What's the object of this war? Is to harvest souls, to kill, and to destroy. This warfare has no conventions, has no protocol, but we have seen it in our lives. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Nobody envisioned the pandemic situation we see here. For we can see fright, hopelessness in hope. And as it was in Egypt, when the Lord was going to pass, he said, Moses, I'm going to pass through this land. And I will pass judgment over all the gods of Egypt. All the gods of the land. Where are they? Amen. It also has exposed all the false prophets in our midst. Today they are ashamed. We have seen governments and rulers in panic. Our scientific knowledge, whatever we know, has become what? Invalid. Everywhere is in disarray. Cemeteries are full in so places. And the social order has been attacked. But I have good news for you. The Bible says, and it came to pass. And the situation we are facing today, it shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we all say amen? Now, in the Bible, what came to pass? There are so many biblical examples given unto us that show what came to pass. People face real situation, real danger, life-threatening situations, but it came to pass. The first one I want to talk about is the one which our sister did mention with the children watching the video. That's the story of Noah. God told Noah because at that time, the whole earth world was in turmoil. There was disobedience. There was evil. There was iniquity. There was heartlessness. And the Bible said, God looked from heaven and it repented him that he has made man. And then God told Noah. How did he find Noah? Noah. His eyes moved to and fro over all the earth. But when he found Noah, the Bible says he found favor. Noah found favor with the Lord. In this situation, you will find favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Then God told Noah, said, Noah, the end of all flesh has come unto me. And he gave him instruction to build the ark. You all know the story. Noah took 120 years, he built the ark. By the time he was building the ark, people were making jest of him. As today, when people are proclaiming the gospel, they think the gospel is for poor people. People don't have anything to do. And by the time it was a week to the D-Day, God told Noah, Noah, enter into the ark. And Noah, his wife, his three children, and their wives, they entered into the ark. And God closed the ark. And for 40 days and 40 nights, the rain fell. But Noah and his family, they were preserved. May you be preserved in the mighty name of Jesus. And then God made a promise. After it came to pass, that they came out and made an offering unto the Lord. The Lord made a promise found in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Say, so long as the earth remaineth, day and night, cold and winter, sea time and harvest, Say they shall not cease. It came to pass that Noah was preserved and his family. Then in Genesis chapter 15, there is a very perplexing episode in the life of our forefather Abraham. Abraham had been childless. He has been childless. But God had promised him that Abraham in you and through your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And Noah was, uh, sorry, Abraham was advancing in age. He had no child. At a point of time, he went to God and asked that, Lord, would you make the promise come through this servant of mine, Eliezer? And God said, no. The promise will come from your own bowels. And God showed Abraham, what was going to be in the ages to come? May God open our eyes to see reality in the mighty name of Jesus. God caused a deep sleep to fall onto Abraham and God revealed far and future things which his seed were going to do in the land of the living and what they will become on the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The story of Jacob, we all know. He was a crooked man, but it came to pass that God met him. And God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Because he said, as a prince, you have struggled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Amen. What came to pass? There was a nation which was sacked from the face of the earth about 2,500 years away. And God prophesied the coming together of that nation in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 where he featured the dry bones. If you get time, and read it again. He said the valley was full of bones which were dry and dusty. And God called the prophet and said, shall these bones live again? I don't want to bore you because we all know the text. But in the end, when prophecy was made unto the dry bones, the Bible said, behold, they rose up and became a mighty army. Wherever you are knocked down, it shall come to pass. The Lord will resurrect you and you rise up to become what? A living force in the mighty name of Jesus. Then God made a promise through the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah wrote in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8. He said, shall a nation be born in one day? A woman went to travail. And he gave birth. Have you seen somebody becoming pregnant and giving birth the same day? But that is what happened. A nation was born 
in one day. And that nation is the nation of Israel. It was born on the 14th of May, 1947, after they had been sacked 2,500 years before. Never has a thing like that happened on the face of the earth. For it came to pass. Hallelujah. Now, let me say, today we have been locked down. Is it the first time that the whole world is being locked down? The Bible said there is nothing new under the sun. Lockdown is not a current situation from the what COVID-19. No. Noah and his family, they were locked down for 150 days. That's five months. During the Passover of Egypt, they were locked down. A king called Sennacherib intended to invade Samaria. And he locked down Samaria. Nobody could go out. Nobody could come in. Food supplies couldn't come in. Water was short. It became so worse that people started to eat their children. It will not come to that in Jesus' name. That was a lockdown. At the time of Gideon, the Bible said the Midianites terrorized the Israelites for seven years. That was a lockdown. When Apostle Paul was going about seeking Christians to destroy, they went into hiding. That was a lockdown. Now we are going to talk about a plague. Also, that brought a lockdown. So, lockdown is not anti-biblical, as some people have said, or some people have said. Christ Chapel, I won't say we are locked down. We are not locked down. We are not coming here to meet, but we are in our homes because the church shall march on. The gates of prayer shall not prevail against the church. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. We are going to talk about a plague which happened in the time of King David in Jerusalem. As we read in the scripture from 2 Samuel chapter 24. I want to say that there is nothing on the face of this earth that comes by chance. There is nothing in the universe that happens by chance. No. No. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, it says, everything has a cause and has what? Effect. One, if the curse is from God himself, no man has power or no man has solution. The solution to our pandemic situation is with nobody. It's not with chloroquine. It's not with building immunity. It is with God Almighty himself. And as it came to pass, it shall also pass away and we'll have our peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Now back to the story in 2 Samuel chapter 24. You have all read it and you know it. King David ordered a census that the whole Israel should be counted. And it was against the will of God. We are not going into why it constituted an iniquity. It will be for another time. But David was counseled that he should not do that. But he did not listen to counsel. And for nine months, 20 days, he ordered his troops to go through the whole of Israel and they made the count. After the census was taken, David had smote him and he knew he had not done well. He went to God and pleaded with the Lord. The Lord became very angry with David. He said, David, there is trouble for you. For disobeying the word of God, there is trouble. And I said that anywhere the word of God is trivialized, we create problems. We make a doorway for demons to enter to terrorize. That is why obedience is better than sacrifice. God 
gave King David options. He said, David, I'm going to instigate nature against you and Israel for seven years. That rain will not fall and then there will be famine. Or I'm going to cause you to fall in the hands of your adversaries for three months. Or I myself, I'm going to deal with you for three days. So choose what you want to be done to you. Now, in the story that preceded, God said he was going to deal with David. And God sent judgment upon Israel. The Bible says that 70,000 men, they died. And the question we want to ask, we know that our God is good. Does God kill Does it destroy? Listen carefully. In this church age, church dispensation, we are enjoying the grace of God. The grace of God. God is also the God of judgment. He's a God of war. Bible says he killeth and he makes alive. Who is the one who sent the angel of death in Egypt? He's the most high God. He killed their firstborns. He slew the army of Pharaoh. He's the one who burned Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. He slew the army of Sennacherib. He smote Herod and he died. Why does he kill? He kills because judgment has come. There's iniquity in our nation. The killings and killings and killings. The injustice, the destruction, the kidnappings, dispossessing people of their lands, rituals and ritualism, satanism, open robberies. Is there no God who created the earth? Is the earth for man? It is time for accountability. Amen. Coronavirus will go. But those who do mockery, and who do wickedly, they shall meet instant judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who have ears, let them hear. So what happened? David said, Dan, what you have told me is too mighty for me. Let me fall in the hands of God, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hands of man, So two days, the angel of death went through the whole of Israel and killed 70,000 people. They died. David went to God and pleaded, Father, it is me and my father's house. Please deal with me and leave these people alone. Amen. What did God do? God listened to what David has said. God brought solution. We read in verse 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented of the evil and said to the angel, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And God opened the eyes of David and he saw the angel of death standing in the field of Aruna. And he went to Aruna. That's David. He went and he bought the land. And he made a sacrifice. And the plague stopped. I've told you that the solution to this plague is God himself. Amen. Praise the Lord. The present situation did not come by itself. It is a highly demonized what? Projection against human beings on this earth. It is also in fulfillment of prophecy. If we go to the Bible book of Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. You open that place and you will read. And you will see what happened. It says, four angels were positioned at the four corners of the earth. 
Which means that what was going to happen will be universal. Every part of the face of the earth. And they were holding four winds of the earth. What are those four winds? They are for judgment. But another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom was given power to hurt the earth. And the fourth angel, the fifth angel, this is what he said. He said, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. That is vegetation. Why? Until they have sealed the servants of the Most High God, then they can go and hurt the earth. Now, who are the elect? It's because of the elect, that is why God has stayed. What? The destruction of the earth. It's because of the elect. Are you part of the elect? The Bible gave their number as their 144,000. But are we saying that only 144,000 are the people who will be saved? No. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. It says, And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. They are from all nations. They are from all kindreds. They are from all people. And they are from all tongues. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb and they were clothed with white robes and they had palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God who seated on the throne and unto the Lamb. Hallelujah. Are you among the elect? Are you among this great crowd who no man can count, wearing white robes, singing salvation unto the Lord? Amen. Now, to what is happening now, we are bringing our sermon to a close now. What do we need for this virus to abate? For us to have our freedom and return to our normal lives? Listen carefully. What we need is the voice of the Most High. It's not the voice of the prophet. It's not the voice of man. It's the voice of the Most High God. God looked upon David with mercy. Because David told mercy, told the Lord, said, Lord, may I fall into your hand? Because I know you are a merciful God. You will not finish me, but my enemies will finish me. Let me fall into your hand. God remembered what this mercy plea of David, and he told the angel, He said, Stop, hold forth your hand, amen. And the plague did what it stopped. God said, It is not stay your hand. The same way in Revelation chapter 7, where we have read, he said, There is an angel who cried with a loud voice. And he said, hot not the earth, hot not the sea, hot not the trees, until the servants of God has been sealed. Praise the Lord. It is the voice of the Lord that will bring healing. It is the voice of the Lord that will bring normalcy. It is the voice of the Lord that will bring restoration. And it shall come to pass. Our Lord will do so for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Solution number two. David was commanded to build an altar for the Lord and to make sacrifice. He went to a man, Haruna, in whose land they saw the angel with a drawn sword. And David was commanded to make a sacrifice. Haruna told David, he said, no, I will give you the stretching floor. I will give you free of charge. And David made a statement. He says, Neither will I offer a burnt offering unto the Lord my God, that which costs me nothing. It means there is a sacrifice for all children of God to do. One, to plead mercy. And two, to offer a sacrifice unto the Most High God. 
We are told in the book of Romans chapter 12 that we make our life a living sacrifice by trans- being transformed in the renewal of our mind. The question is, are you committed to the things of God? Are you sealed today? Then the chapter 12 says, the people that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploit. Ephesians chapter 6, 12. Say, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That is what we need today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Say, why we look not at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary. What does he mean? They shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we need to do is now is to plead for the mercy of the Lord. Bible says for the mercy of the Lord, because of the mercy, we are not consumed. And I will ask us, all of us, to bow our heads as we go into prayer before the Most High God. I want all of us to plead mercy. Science has failed. Money has failed. Power has failed. I was watching a footage on the social media of a man in Italy, a a multi-billionaire. His wife has died. His children and all his family have been wiped out by the coronavirus. And what happened? He said, what am I living for? Money could not save. Power could not save. Influence could not save. Knowledge could not save. And this man has a 20-story 20 sto- 20 building. And he went up and he jumped and everybody was watching him. And he came and hit the floor and exploded. I said, what evil is this? It shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray and plead for the mercy. This is not the time to pray pray for success or for money. Or for blessing. Pray for mercy because the Bible says, for the mercies, because of the mercies of the Lord, we are not consumed. Say, Lord God, your mercy is from generation to generation. Say, you show us mercy to thousands of people who love you. Lord, show your mercy unto your children. And let your voice ring out, Father. You are the God of grace. And you are the God that shows us mercy. Father, be merciful. We stand at your altar. And we stand, Father, in your name. And we stand and we plead mercy. Mercy unto this city. Mercy unto our state. Mercy unto our nation. Mercy unto all the four corners of the earth. The continents of the earth. The continent of Africa. The continent of Europe. The continent of Asia. The continent of North and South America. And the continent of Australia. Including all the islands. Father, we plead your mercy. We plead your mercy. We plead your mercy. Let your mercy intervene. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody somewhere made mention that the coronavirus would decimate the whole population of Africa. We stand and we say, the Bible say, evil bows before the good and the wicked at the gate of the righteous. It shall not come to be in the mighty name of Jesus. We return the words, the evil was spoken. We said those evil words, we return it, we condemn you, and we say you are of no effect. We render you useless, null, and void. It shall never be in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise your name, and we bow down before you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done, what you are doing for us, and what you will do. We are going to pray with Psalm 91. And you follow me. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, 
we plead and we pray that we will dwell in your secret place. We shall abide under your shadow in the mighty name of Jesus. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is our God in whom we shall we trust. Surely he shall deliver us from the snares of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings shall we trust. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. We shall not be afraid for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our sides, and ten thousand at our right hand. It shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the law, who is our refuge, even the most high our habitation, there shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. I repeat, there shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over us, to keep us in all our ways. They shall bear us in their hands, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the other, the young lion and the dragon, shall we trample on their feet. Hallelujah. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore the Lord will deliver us and will set us on high because we have known his name. We shall call upon him. He will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. And with long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. May the name of the Lord be praised. May the God of Jacob be honored. The word of God are yea and amen. The word of God abided forever. Father, we have spoken your word. And let your will be done. And let your children dwell in you from now and forever. Knowing that at the end of the day, it shall come to pass. God bless you. Praise you the Lord. Amen. We shall bring this glorious service to a close by singing there shall be showers of blessing and it will come to pass that shower of blessing will come upon your home in Jesus name
Raise your hands as we pray. May the Lord be with you. May the God of heaven bless you. May the name of the Lord that's a strong tower protect and defend you. When the numbers are counted, may you not diminish in the mighty name of Jesus. May we be covered by the protective arm of the Most High God. May we not fear. May we not fall. May the grace of God protect and defend and elevate us. May we be found in the house of the Most High God. May we be mighty in our service to the Most High God. And may the Lord protect us in our going out, in our coming in, in our going home, in our sleeping, in our waking, in our eating, in our sleeping, in our drinking. Sorry. May the Lord be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, it shall be well with you. Father, we thank you, Lord. We dedicate this prayer and commit it to the grace of God, to the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. May we share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. In your homes, turn to one another and prophesy. And say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house forever and ever and ever and ever. And we all say what? Amen. Praise the Lord.